when we start talking about classifications of matter, you have to start with what is matter, okay? In chemistry, we're going to talk about two things, matter and energy, okay? So that's why we call chemistry the central science, because it, it talks about matter and energy. Try having any science without matter and energy. Not gonna, it's not going to happen, right? Okay. The physics claims that they're the base science of chemistry, of chemistry, and chemistry claims it's the base science of physics. Okay, so it the the two the, the two are, are really interconnected. But for uh, chemistry, we really deal with a lot of matter, and with physics, that's usually a study of more energy. That being said, you can't hardly really study one without the other. So you can't really do much of it. Um, of one in, versus the other in a vacuum. Okay, so there's always going to be a matter-energy relationship. The thermodynamics. Okay, so whenever we're talking about matter, we're talking about things that occupy space. That's part of the definition. Another part of the definition is that if it's occupying space, it has to have a distinct rest mass. That means that it's got to have some sort of mass associated with it. Okay. In general, when you talk about the physics definition, you have to have mass at rest because it's hard to weigh something while it's in motion. The things change the further you get closer to the speed of light. Mass increases exponentially, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, end of the universe, that type of thing. I don't know how the end of the universe was stuck in there, but it did. So consider yourselves instructed. All right. So anything that basically has, has mass Occupy space. It's going to be matter. So now we get down to more uh, specific classifications of what matter is. So we have two classifications of matter. Okay. The first one over here is going to be a substance. The other one over here is going to be a mixture. Right. Substances in general are going to be pure. We're talking about one particular substance. It could be elemental, it could be a compound. So I could talk about pure water. Okay, so I could talk about pure water, pure ice. I can talk about pure carbon dioxide, pure P, toluene, sulfonic acid. All of these things are going to be considered substances. Okay, for the most part. And when we talk about a substance, we're talking about generally being as pure as we can probably get. So like 99.9% .9 pure. <clears throat> we generally don't say 100% pure because <laughs> We can't look at all the atoms that are inside of a container and say for certain that all of those atoms are, are what we say they are. But we can look at it and say, but we have know that 99.9% .9 of this is going to be as pure as we think. Okay? So the substance is going to be pure. Okay? Or, or very, very pure. A mixture, on the other hand, is when you have more than one substance mixed together. For example, I talked about pure water. Okay? But if you look at salt water, salt water is not pure water, it's a mixture. Okay? So this is two or more substances mixed together. Alright, so two or more substances that are going to be mixed together. And that's what matter is. Okay? The two type of definitions of matter. You have a mixture and you have a substance. Now to give you an example of some things that in common life that are mixtures or in substances, okay? <laughs> Something that you often run into, uh, oxygen. Oxygen gas itself is going to be a pure substance, okay? But what we breathe, in reality, is air. And air is a mixture. It has oxygen gas, nitrogen. It's got water. It's got argon, carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide. Um, some xenon, probably, okay? 
All of these things are mixtures of what we have in the air. Okay? Other types of matter that you would look at, you would say, are uh, substances versus mixtures. If you look at vitamin C, for example, okay? Vitamin C is a substance. Vitamin C is a pure substance. I get that from drinking orange juice, which is a mixture. Now, what do you guys encounter in your daily life that is a pure substance? Anything um, that's a pure substance? Well, if you are married or engaged, you might have a gold wedding band. It might be solid gold, all right? That would be a pure substance. Rarely do you run into wedding bands that are uh, mixtures, okay? Sometimes it's platinum. Some people are getting titanium wedding bands, okay? These types of things, these types of wedding bands, they're usually a pure substance, okay? The steel that you drive your car around in, guess what? Steel is not an element. It's not a pure substance. Steel is actually a mixture. It's got some carbon in there, it's got some chromium, in addition to all the iron that's used to make the steel. Okay, polymers, that's an interesting question. Is a polymer a pure substance? Well, guess what, it's the same repeating units of one or two things, and they make one large molecule. We look at that molecule as sort of a whole, and we say that that thing is going to be a substance. Because it's made one molecule as a whole, even though it's made up of several different small molecules. DNA is in the same way. We look at DNA, we look at DNA and say DNA is a substance. DNA is its own molecule. It's made up of several different amino acids in a long uh, organic polymer backbone, and those are all components to DNA, but because DNA is one large molecule all bounded together, we're gonna call that a pure substance, okay? We can talk about extensive and intensive properties of different matter, okay? There's we have to talk about what these two things are. An extensive property depends on the amount of mass, okay? So this one over here, this one we're gonna call mass dependent. And obviously, intensive properties are gonna be things that are mass independent. And then, okay. okay. Things that are mass dependent, things that are mass independent. So certain properties of different matter are going to be either extensive or intensive. Obviously, the mass of a material is going to be extensive. You're going to have more mass the more of it that you add. Okay. If you look at water, the more water that you add. Okay, the more water that there is, the more likely you're going to have diffraction. That's why the water in the ocean looks blue. It's because of the light that's being bent. Okay, if there's not enough water, it's going to look clear. So the more mass that you have, the more of that blue diffraction that you're going to see. And that blue diffraction is going to be an extensive property. Intensive properties are things that are not mass dependent. Okay, such as freezing point or melting point. or the boiling point. Any phase transition is going to be dependent on um, in intensive or uh, is going to be listed as an intensive property. So freezing point is the transition that we get between something that's a solid and something that's a liquid. Freezing point is solids going to liquid. These are the states of matter. Okay? So at this point, these are states. Anything that is... Can you read that? Mm -hmm. Let me turn this a little bit. Alright. So states. Anything that, that describes the flow state of a material, okay, is like solid, liquid, and gas. Okay? The states of matter. So a freezing point is solid going to liquid. If I go the other direction, that's melting. Okay? If I go from a liquid to a gas, that's a 
gasoline is one acid. Liquid to a gas, that's going to be a boiling point, right? Okay, so at this point, this is boiling. If it goes the other direction, it's condensation. So if you've ever seen, if you ever get a glass of cold water with ice on a hot day that's humid, you'll see all that water forming on the outside, the condensation on the outside of that glass. That's water in the atmosphere going from gas to liquid around that glass, around that uh, glass right there. So that's a different, that's a type of phase change. Okay. If I go from gas to solid, solid. That is going to be a condensation as well. But if I go from solid to gas, this is called sublimation. All right? If you've ever seen snow and you just leave it around in dry conditions, even though it's cold, the snow will eventually disappear because of sublimation. All right? So now that I've introduced the three states of matter, I have to define what they are. Okay, a solid, if I have a container and I put a solid inside the container, like a rock or something, that solid is going to, to sit in the container. Okay, I'm going to call this a block of ice, actually. So I put a block of ice inside of a container, and notice that it doesn't completely fill the container and doesn't conform to the shape of the container. Okay, so here's my box container. The ice is just going to sit in the bottom. If I go to liquid, right, as the ice melts, it's going to fill some of that container. So now this is water, right? Notice that the water doesn't completely fill the container. Maybe some people say, well, what if you fill it all the way up to the top? Well, then if you put it into a bigger container, does it fill that container? Right? But notice that the water over here is conforming to the shape of the container. Okay? And over here, for gas, right, I can have steam inside the container, and the steam, as long as it's hot, completely fills the container. So this one does not. Actually, let me put it this way. Put a list here. So I'll put here, this conforms to the shape. And down here, we'll have this completely fills container. So if it complete, if it conforms to the container, well, as far as shape goes, as ice, ice does not conform to the shape of the container, nor does it completely fill the container. Okay. Water does not completely fill the container because it's a liquid. All right, but it does conform to the shape of the container. As far as gas, gas fills both of those conditions. So those are the definitions of both solid, liquid, and gas.